Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Victoria Ayadele Fash. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for joining me. For a new subscriber, you know I love you. You know I appreciate you so much. Thank you for always and always coming back. Okay, so today I want to discuss uh, a topic that, you know, mostly, right, before I decide, when I decide to talk about stuff like this, it's usually because I've had multiple people reach out to me on the same topic right so um this previous week alone i've had about three you know people reach out to me you know who are struggling with this and i thought okay if i had three people in one week and i've had people reach out to me previously about it then but if i've had this much people then there must be you know more people out there you know who are or who is you know dealing with this so this is going to be just like a chit chat that's why the setting is a bit informal yes <laughs> all right so let us get right into it so today we're talking about um uh some of the struggles that we face when we are in relationships okay and this is one struggle that even i and my husband faced when we were dating right um yeah the struggle of you know not touching each other not doing things to each other you know trying to do relationship right do it god's way and be faithful to god and to each other and all of that right so i had this lady reach out to me i'm just going to read uh, a summary of her message so she said good evening victoria i hope this message finds you well i hope you're very fine i'm doing good thank you guys he said um can i just say thank you so much for your youtube video content it means a lot to me and i have been learning a lot my name is this i live in this i'm currently in a serious relationship with someone at the moment and with god on our side god is helping us well we cherish each other and we love each other each other so much he's a christian and i am too and uh, but there is a problem going on right now that i need your advice on um she said we sexed each other each other i don't know if it's a word <laughs> obviously yes sex sexting is a word it's like texting but texting sexual content right um uh, and then she went on to say, you know, how bad she felt and she said, I am beginning not to want to do it anymore. So how do we go about it? Also, is it normal to feel that way with your boyfriend? And how can we try to avoid this? That I just binge watched all of your videos to see how we can both um, do this. Please help me. We really mean the world to each other, but I don't want this to be the reason why we break up um, or it could be because of our age. The both of them are between um, 25 to uh, 25 to 28. That's their age bracket. Um, I am just lost, but she said, but one thing she said um, that really struck me, she said that, no, she wasn't the one. It was the second person. So I have another message, but I'm not going to read that one. You know, um, that one also said, you know, the Holy Spirit has been tormenting me, this and this and that, um, about this. And, um, whew. so when I read the message, right, okay, and it's funny again because, like I said, she's the second person who has reached out to me, third person rather, in one week about this issue. And it's funny because she is in a long distance relationship, and I can relate a lot to a lot of things she said. Um, the second person, however, they are not in a long distance relationship, you know, and her own is every time they are together, in as much as they don't want to have sex before marriage, they find out that they, you know, they do everything apart from the penetrative aspect of it and you know of course there is the if you have the holy spirit inside of you there's the conviction and that's what i told the other lady that reached out to me that the holy spirit does not torment anybody the holy spirit convicts you of your sin hoping that you know that you will change and you know move on from it right the holy spirit does not torment it that's the job of the devil right the devil is the tormentor and i've said it over and again on this channel that you know devil is not tormenting you with the aim of making you stop he's tormenting you with the aim of getting you to the point where you believe that you're helpless and there's nothing you can do to control this so you might as well just continue doing it right the god that we serve does not condemn he does not torment right and then to the first question the second question that she asked because the 
the other person that I was also talking to, you know, the one in a not in a long distance relationship, you know, she also asked me the same question like, is it normal to feel this way? Is it normal for me to, for us to want to touch ourselves, for us to always talk about sexual thing and stuff? And I would say, and again, don't take whatever I say as authority. The word of God is the authority, right? I'm just going to say this from my own perspective and from my own experience and the experience of people that I have, you know, that I, ha that I have around me, okay? And I think one of the things I told her, first of all, is that the Holy Spirit doesn't submit, which we've already established. And the second thing is that it is absolutely normal for you to be sexually attracted to the person you are in a relationship with. As a matter of fact, if you are in a relationship with a person for a while and you don't feel like going that way, you don't feel like, you know, sexting every now and then, or you, and remember I said feel, okay? You don't feel like touching each other or kissing each other or hugging each other when you guys are together, then there is a problem, okay? There is definitely a problem. You are definitely either not sexually attracted to the person or you really don't even like the person, okay? The feeling of attraction and love, even the Bible says that marry or you burn. Yes, it says that if you don't want to burn, burn there. It's not that you burn in hell. <laughs> burn in that scripture is sexual desire. So the Bible says that if you don't get married, you will burn with sexual lust and sexual desire. And that's why the Bible says marry, get married, right? But I've said it again on this channel that we've come to the point or in our generation where, you know, we have um, made marriage, you know, one of the last things that you have to do in your life is when you are, when, you know, when you're, uh, you've succeeded, you've achieved everything you need to achieve, you've become this and that, then you think of marriage, right? So it's always like it's either you're successful or you're married, right? So, and it's, you know, because we have that mindset, a lot of people end up staying so long and burning so long before they get married or the other side they shut down the sexual part of their of their life i was counseling a lady this week also she's getting married she's in her 30s about to get married and um she has so much you know especially when you are in some conservative church sort of in that way you end up shutting down your sexual desires you know you guys if you watch my video with miriam in unashamed um in the unashamed series you realize that you know she also spoke about that you know so it's it's either two ways it's either you know you burn or you totally shut it down then when it's time to get married you're struggling with your sexual urges right so yeah but for this case it's like I, we can't take our hands off each other and all of that and again like i said to her it is completely normal, you know, for you to feel that way. It's just the it's just a signal that, you know, you actually like the person, you're actually attracted to the person, which is good because you want that in your marriage. You don't want to be with someone that doesn't turn you on. Okay, you don't want to be with someone that doesn't make your body shake whenever you guys are together, right? However, there are uh, principles in the word of God, right? But before we even get into that, I want to talk about some of the reasons why it's difficult for you guys to keep your hands off each other. Remember I've said it's normal, but when it gets to the point where, you know, you start to act on it and, you know, you're, you're starting to feel like, um, okay, we are going too far, right? Like I said, uh, I can't really I can relate to you know some of these things because when I was dating my husband also <laughs> it, it was you know long distance relationship kinds of gifts you and that's why I see it I always I always believe and I still believe that long distance relationship is the best form of relationship okay <laughs> because it really really saves you because I, I I I don't know I don't know if me and my husband would have kept ourselves as long as we did if we were in short distance relationship actually i know i know we would have kept it <laughs> but a lot of things would have occurred not that anyways let's move on this is not about me so um yeah like i said it's normal you feel that way um uh and then as i said let us go into some of the reasons so i listed a few reasons why um you feel that way okay so I, the first thing i say is when you date for too long yes um I've, and, and this is not to say that if you start dating like for a short period of time you won't feel that way you will feel that way right okay um so let's take for instance you know we just met and you know we are friends because you know i always advise that you guys become friends first and then you date for like three like four okay let's even say maximum one year right and you after one year you get married and all of that it is easier for you to control yourself right than for someone who has been dating for three years we haven't touched each other we haven't kissed we haven't hugged let's even say you hug and you kiss <coughs> 
your body will crave for more because the longer you are the more committed you are the more in love you're falling and you know the more you are feeling like ah, we've been in this thing for a while we can as well i mean we are almost we are almost like married couples okay we've stayed longer than some people that are even got married right so when you date for too long right you will the pressure will be too much okay so yeah so i always say this like when you find somebody and that's the thing right when you find somebody that you think you want to spend the rest of your life with if you think you're not ready i told you guys when my husband approached me then i wasn't sure i was ready even though i finished my university degree i wasn't just sure that i was ready to you know get married anytime soon and um but then i became sure and then we ended up but if i wasn't if i didn't get to that place where i felt like okay in the next three years i don't want to get you know even though we ended up dating for three years yes we dated for three or four years almost four years right but you know in my mind in our plans was that we're going to get married the next year um or a, in a year and six months that was reasonable to me but if i had seen it that time that it was going to take three years uh i don't know if i would have ended up in that relationship right but you see uh, when you date for too long right you burn your passion will burn for each other and before you know what is happening you know you feel like what is there let's just do it right so i think that that's one of the reasons so i always say and that one of the ways to combat that is if you know you're interested in a person you know i always say start with being friends right if you know you're not ready to be in a relationship or to make a commitment i don't know if it would be wise to start a romantic relationship if you know you're not ready right so you've been i know people have been dating since secondary school majority of them they are still they're having sex because you can't date for 10 years or for nine years or for five six Seven years and nothing is happening and you go ah, ah. It's, it's like punishment it's like torture right so yeah dating for too long and then the other point is dating without a goal in mind right and I was advising one of the people who reached out to me um, this week that you know you have to date with a purpose right when you're dating that our aim is to get married and not just to get married to get married within this period i think that's one of the things that helped me and my husband because we knew that okay in the next year or a year and a half we will get married right so even when you know things occurred and i traveled and you know a lot of things happened we were always like okay in six months time okay let's push it six months time let's push it six months time okay there was always a goal there was always like an end so it was always like oh if something is doing me right my body is doing me chief just like, ah, in the next you know in two months time in ten months time in one year time in four months time you know there's always something to look forward to but if you're dating without a goal if you're dating and there is no clear um there is no clear decision about when you guys are planning to get married you will just you know it's like you're you're dating without aim right your body will be calling for those things but not to say that if you have plans your body won't call for it it will call for it but because you have a goal in mind you are able to like restrict yourself so me and my husband are in a long distance relationship most of you guys know long distance marriage not relationship ah, right and uh, even as a long distance even as a married person your body is going to it's going to ginger and ask you for you know for things right and when that happens you know and sometimes it happens to both of us at this most times it actually happens to both of us at the same time and you know when we have that conversation it's like okay in the next this in the next that you know this is going to happen in the next this you know when we see each other in this and that okay because we have a goal in mind we have something we are planning towards right but if there is nothing that we are looking towards it's going to make it more daunting and before you know what's happening you're trying to settle or sort out yourself with somebody else or by yourself or do you know do stuff right but when you know that ah no i just need five months five months in five months time i will do you know it makes it easier right so dating without a goal is one of the things so if you're feeling that maybe you want to ask yourself like what is the goal of this relationship right how long are we looking for because knowing how long kind of gives you the uh the ability to like put your body under sub subjection right and another is uh your and another reason that you know you struggle with it is because you are too afraid to have the conversation right so the people who at least one of the three people who reached out to me it's always like i don't want even she said it i don't want this to be the you know i don't want to have i'm afraid if i say it if i say it something might happen right if i say it it might be the end of our relationship i'm afraid that my end up i'm afraid that my hurt is feeling i'm afraid i might make him feel less than a christian i'm afraid i might come off as being too spiritualized and stuff 
like that. The fear of having, because the tr truth is, if the two of you are Christians, there is a high possibility that he is feeling the same way you're feeling, okay? The guilt, you know, if, especially if it's a conviction, right? It doesn't just happen to one person. The Holy Spirit convicts both, both, both parties. So there is there is a possibility that he's also feeling the same way, or she's also feeling the same way. But nobody wants to, like, have that conversation, even though you're feeling that way, right? So... <clears throat> You need to be able to talk about it. Like, let him know that, okay, I know we've been doing this, but I don't feel right about this. I feel like, you know, we are not, you know, doing this right and, and all of that, right? I know, you know, we think, but really, if we really, really think about it, it's not just penetration that is sex. And I think we are doing too much. Can we give it a break? Can we, you know go back to the drawing board can we avoid can we abstain and stuff like that but if you don't have that conversation you will just keep falling into it because you're afraid that he's going to leave you or she's going to, and the truth is if anybody leaves you because of you know your purity or your dedicating your body to god then that relationship is not even is not probably not even the best to begin with right so the fear of having that conversation is why a lot of people still struggle with it because trust me if only you would just take the confidence and actually have that conversation you will realize that the other person is actually feeling the same especially if you share the same faith right which brings me to my next point is when you're dating someone that you don't share the same faith with okay so you're a christian you believe in god you believe in waiting before marriage but you end up going to date someone who you know you guys know when i met my husband you know he had a sexual past but when we met you know we discussed you know and i knew that our values aligned i knew that he believed in what i believed in and all of that right so if you're dating someone who doesn't see, like, so in your dating, he's telling you that I have beg sex before my, I was test before I buy. You know, he's telling you all of those things. And then you go ahead to be in a relationship with him. You're definitely going to struggle with it, right? So if you marry someone who doesn't share the same faith and belief with you, not just in God, but in, you know, in the things that God asks you not to do, especially when it regards purity. If you end up being in a relationship with someone who doesn't believe the same way, you are going to struggle, right? So that's one of the reasons I also think that people struggle, right? So if you are like that, maybe you need to even first of all consider that relationship. Like if he doesn't believe in abstaining totally before marriage, uh, then you have a problem actually as abstaining, right? So maybe you want to have, you know, that conversation, right? And I said, you are too, you are afraid to lose the relationship, which I already spoke about. Like if you're too afraid that if I say it is going to leave me, if I say she's going to leave me, uh, then you are, you probably are dealing with some insecurities in that relationship. I knew for a fact that if I told my husband, like, and we actually had that conversation at a point because, it, you know, when we're talking also, we'd sex with each other every once in a while. And, you know, it, you know, and at a point we had to have, like I said, brother, I don't even know who started the conversation, which I just knew we had that conversation. We had to like put a hold to it. So basically you need to have that conversation and not be afraid to, you know, whatever happens, happens, right? You know, um, especially if it's God who led you into that relationship, I don't think you should be afraid that something as trivial as that is going to end it. And if he ends it, Maybe it was never meant to be, okay? And then another reason that I have here is... Oh, my mom is calling. Not stating the rules or... Yeah, rules of engagement. Before you enter into any kind of contract in this life, you always have to... Any kind of engagement, right? You always have contracts. You always have rules and all of that. But when we enter into relationships, sometimes we don't set clear rules. I remember when I was... Um, when my husband asked me out... There were a lot of things I had to tell him. One of the things I told him was, I've never had sex before. I don't plan on having it before marriage. Um, I told him, I cannot date a person that drinks. You know, I cannot do this. I cannot do that. Like we said, and I told him, this is me. If you know that anything I'm saying is against, you know, let us talk about it, right? So there are some rules that I had that they're not necessarily like God's, God giving, okay? They were just like me, not my own preference, right? But we had that conversation and, um, you know, there's some things that, you know, I could compromise on and I, we eventually compromised on, but we knew what we're going into. I knew the kind of person it was. He knew me. So we knew the kind, we, you know, we set rules for our relationship. So whenever, you know, we get together we we hold ourselves responsible we agreed we are not going to do this we agreed we'll not do that even when we end up you know falling and doing mistakes we say go back to the drawing board we agreed we're not going to do this so why is this happening i think we need to like take a step back and stuff like that so when you have rules in your you know one of my rules to him was there is no exes i don't want to hear my ex is my friend my friend no i i'm i'm not a jealous type but 
I don't want it, right? So, and those are things that we have to, you know, walk through, right? So, yeah, you have to, when you go into a relationship and there are no rules, there are no, and, uh, you know, when I, maybe the word rules is a thing, but it's just rules of engagement, right? It's rules of, like, this is how we're going to do things. This is what we are not going to do. This is, you know, the kind of man I want. This is the kind of relationship I'm looking forward to. What are yours? And then how can we, you know, walk towards that, right? So you tell him these are my non-negotiables. These are my non-negotiables and stuff like that. But when you go into a relationship without a set of principles that guides that relationship, you will end up in situationships like this, right? Another thing I had here is, you know, ah, when you, if you're fine, especially if you're in a long distance relationship, one of the reasons why you end up doing that sometimes is the fact that you don't have a lot of things to talk about, right? You know, and as someone reached out to me the other day, she has been in it. I think maybe we need to do a video, maybe me and my husband, when we have the time to, you know, actually analyze, you know, when you are in a long distance relationship, when you get together, you know, sometimes you are out of things to talk about you don't have i you know so you the, the nights like that me and my husband we always had things to talk about right funny enough because i would always go on social media find something i'll send it i say let's talk about this in the night or you know um something interesting that happens to me i won't just say i'll tell him i have i have just for you at night and you know we analyze we we'll talk about it a lot of preaching a lot because i listen to messages a lot every preaching i listen i think that oh this might benefit him i'll send it to him watch this message let's talk about it at night and stuff like that we always always had something to talk about but you see when your relationship that have you eaten have you left how was work today how was your day oh good and then you're done and then you don't have any other thing to talk about before you know what's happening you start to talk about things you're not supposed to talk about right so when you're out of things to talk about that's when things happen and what i told her is this is what i think is one of the problem for you guys you don't have other things to say so you guys end up just you know end up just um uh uh, talking about stuff. There was another one who reached out to me her own. She said uh, They are now reading a book together. You know, they are, those are the things that they are doing to be able to try to you know to curtail it But that's the thing right if you're not if you're if you are out of ideas of what to talk about You will end up talking about things you're not supposed to talk about so always come up with topics see relationship is you trying to get to know this person the core of who they are so i would randomly pick someone's life or someone something that is trending online just to hear what he thinks about it and that just gives me an idea of his mindset about situations and that gives me a more informed decision if i'm making the right decision and the person i want to marry or even if i knew that okay this was god's will are there certain things that we need to work on before we come right i remember our very first week of dating I sent him something about a church and you know he doesn't necessarily like the pastor and you know we had a like a bit of an argument about it he said his side I said my side and then you know it gave me a mind an idea about his mindset but thankfully his mindset has changed now so I'm just saying that um, you need to have conversations about everything dating time is a time for you to know this person okay um not that you can ever finish knowing because trust me even with all the knowing you know in marriage you still have a lot of shocker but in the core their core you know you know right you know who they are in the core that's why um when my husband annoys me every now and then uh i know who he is right so i know that this is not coming from a place of oh he's been uh difficult or whatever it's i you know so because i know him right so that's what i'm saying that um yeah get to um you have to find something to talk about talk about anything just make sure that you're spending your dating period as prudently as possible okay all right so the last point i'll give you is when you're always in a secluded place together yes when you don't have boundaries you don't have again it comes back to the rules right um you don't have boundaries and this one i'm you know i'm not a very good example of this okay because when i was dating my husband because we're doing long distance relationship right whenever i went to abuja i would sleep over to the end and stuff like that but again because we had rules and we you know we're committed we had values and all of that we're able to keep each other in check right however 
if you know that your self-control is small okay and the person or the person you're dating with does not really have self-control like that maybe you want to minimize the times that you spend together in uh hotels or in his house or sleeping over or you know making yourselves too uh, available in a secluded place right go on dates go out together talk on phone and all of that i just don't think it's sustainable that you will never visit the person but maybe visit them during the day and maybe you know where just look for you know things open the window or whatever right just make sure that you put measures in place right if you know that uh you are too sexually attracted to this person and there's probably no way that you guys will be together without wanting to touch each other right so yeah that is all that i have for the reasons okay so i would say that if you're struggling with this maybe go through the points i've made and try to figure out what could be the reason in my own particular situation and then everything i've said to be able to combat it you probably need to do that right so thank you guys so very much for watching let me know if you have any other ideas why this is again remember i said it is normal for you to feel that way you would definitely be attracted to the person you just need to control yourself right and then have the conversation don't be afraid to have the conversation you know uh, make sure that the person you're dating shares the same values as you uh talk to the person about it put measures in place look for topics to talk about and um you know just generally be careful okay and don't date for too long okay try as much as possible to have something in mind like a date in mind okay because that would help you to like yeah so thank you guys so very much for watching uh until we meet again i still remain victoria ideally fash and i'm gonna see you guys in the next one until then have an amazing week okay bye <laughs> bye guys